Well, our goal, of course, is to try to recoup as much as possible. Now, going into this, we all recognize that uh, we would not be able to recoup the more than $53 million that was, uh, that was stolen. Today, we've recouped about $7.4 million. Uh, you know, our goal is to recoup several million more. I think if you look at the website, uh, just with the online auctions that's going on today, you will see that those websites have been hit hundreds of thousands of times. Uh, will people get bargains? Inevitably, I expect so. But, um, you know, much of the money uh, will not be recoverable. And that's not unusual in a fraud case. Um, you know, over 21 years, there were a lot of uh, consumables that that money was spent on. Uh, and unfortunately, we will not be able to recover that. But uh, certainly, any asset that we can identify that has value, uh, we will pursue. And will it go back to the people of Dixon? Uh, those decisions will be made by the court. Uh, we are, we've been instructed by the court to place all money that we do recover in an escrow account, and it will stay in that escrow account pending further order of the court, but we will make it available for restitution. $53 million is, is a lot of money. I mean, as I understand it, this case has been documented as the single largest municipal fraud in U.S. history. Uh, most people would think that something like this might go on in New York or Chicago or a large major metropolitan city. I think what's unique about this case is where it occurred in a small community uh, of 15,000 people in a, in, a, in a concentrated area. And, um, you know, I think that's what makes this case somewhat unique. As far as its uniqueness with other cases that we've dealt with, you know, we managed the, the Madoff case in New York. Um, you know, much, much more grandeur, uh, many, many more assets, much greater loss. Um, so, you know, again, this is unique because of its location.